about the four best reversal pattern for your trading. So maybe you are a beginner or an advanced trader, so you can use these patterns at every time. So let's start. So my name is Matthias Denicke, just a little introduction. Um, I'm a trader since 2004, so now for almost 15 years, and I'm working for TradingMo for six years or slightly more than six years. So I started 2012 with TradingMo and I'm there the coach, the educational manager, and I'm responsible for the uh, $100,000 live trading account we had there. So I'm kind of a hedge fund manager for the TradingMo account, I would say. Okay, um, just give me a minute to check if Timo is now here but I cannot see him. So yeah, then it's all about me, but doesn't matter. Okay, let's start with the first thing. So today we have four reversal patterns on the agenda, two reversal patterns for bearish markets and two for the bullish markets. And we will start now with the double top. Yeah, the double top pattern is a very popular one. And I think you, yeah, I, the majority of you will know what this pattern is about. And you maybe have seen it uh, very often and I'm not sure if you have traded it so far. So my question to you is, have you known or heard something about the double top formation in your trading career in the last weeks or month? Or is it completely new to you? Yes, okay. One of you have heard of this uh, formation before, this pattern before, and I guess the others are too shy or they don't know anything about the formation. Ah, there's someone typing. Yes, I know the pattern. Okay, okay. Most of you know the pattern and this is no surprise because this is very well known and it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I believe it was covered in trading more lesson already. That's correct. Um, and today I want to show you and all the others attendees that don't know the lesson uh, in which all this is described in detail. Um, what is this double top pattern about? Yeah, the double top pattern uh, is a formation with two tops on a very similar level. You can see this here. Yeah, this is a British pound US dollar, also called a cable chart. Um, we see a very long and yeah, I would almost say a strong uptrend. And this is a requirement of the formation. You need a long upward move before this double top appears. And this double top has the tops at a very similar level this year. You can see this is fulfilled. And the low between must be very clear. Yeah. And it's, I, I, of course, you can say if you want so that this is also a double top, but this double top is on a very small um, period. So it's maybe 15 or 10 candles. And this is not the best one to use or to identify a double top formation. Therefore, I would say it is better to use double top formations on a very long uptrend with at least 20 periods of candles and a very clear low view uh, between the tops. And this wasn't the case here. So it's, yeah, it's a bit blurry. So I wouldn't take this one, but you can see we have a clear top then it moves down and then it moves up again at the similar level and then it breaks down again. And what we have here, the swing low between the tops is the neckline. And the neckline becomes very important when we want to make a trade. And this formation here is on a, I, would, I think it was yeah, a daily chart, but you can use this formation on every time frame you want. So on an hourly chart, on a weekly chart, even on a monthly chart, and of course on the five minute charts as well. 
there is, is no restriction about the using of the time frame. But of course, there's a little tip I can give you. So the higher the time frame, the better the information value. So in, in other words, if you have a double top formation, double top pattern on a daily chart, then it is more powerful and more likely to have a successful trade than yeah, compared to the one minute chart, for example. So the information in a minute chart is less in than in a daily chart. Is this clear to you or do you have any questions so far? And let me just send a message to Timur. So give me just a little break and you can type in all your questions we have so far. Okay, so uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, somebody is typing, so I'm waiting for that. Are the longer time frames an example daily valid to consider in order to place a trade on a shorter ones? Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you can do so, um, of course. You can use the daily pattern to see the formation and then you can, um, can use smaller time frames to, uh, to make the trade, but I would stay on the same time frame. Yeah, you, you have investigated the formation on this time frame and uh, for me, or in my opinion, you should use this time frame for trading the formation. Okay, but the, the question now is, of course, how to trade this? And this is a good question, and of course, we want to answer this question. So usually, you wait for the break of the neckline and then go short. Yeah. So this was the neckline here between the double tops. And if this level breaks, and you can enter the market and you can make a trade, a short trade in this example. And of course, it's not all about just entering a trade. So every stupid donkey can enter a trade. This is not the magic. The magic is to manage the trade. Where's the tick profit? Where's the stop loss? How to manage the stop loss and so on. And yeah, I will show you this here in, um, yeah, in detail. So, if the neckline breaks, then you can enter the market, for example, with a pending order. So you see the market goes down. And at this point, you think maybe like, hmm, if the level breaks, then I want to go short. And you can make a short limit order, so a buy stop, uh, a sell stop order below the neckline, and then your order will fill and the market goes through. The other thing is you can enter the trade if the closing price is below the neckline. In this case, you just have to wait for the break and you have to wait for the closing price. And if the closing price is below the neckline, then you go short in the next period. Yeah? You can use this on a daily, hourly, weekly and so on chart. Um, and just in the next period, after the closing price was below the neckline, then you can go short. So this is the entry. What is the next point? The next point is to manage the risk. So you need to know where your stop loss has to be. And the stop loss in this case should be above the neckline because the neckline becomes after a break a, a resistance level. And you want to use this resistance level for your stop loss. So you place your stop loss slightly above the neckline to protect yourself and your account. And then 
The third question is, where's the take profit? And the take profit in this case is just the mirrored distance between the tops and the neckline to the downside. Yeah, the blue line here is the same as this one. And then you have your take profit level. And yeah, you will see it takes a while to, to achieve this take profit level, but it happens. Of course, and this is very important, um, this formation is not a guarantee to be a successful trader. You will have some losing trades and you will have some winning trades. This should be very clear to you. Okay, yeah. And of course, um, the fantastic risk reward ratio, uh, this was a typo, sorry for that. Um, because mm, now we can. And test. It was true, so sorry, I was a little bit confused. Um, you can see this here. This is the entry level, and this is the stop loss. Yeah, let's say this is yeah something like one, one. And now have a look at the take profit. The take profit is far more away than the stop loss level. So in this case, you will have a risk reward ratio about one to four, something like that. One to three, one to four, one to five, maybe sometimes. So it's a really fantastic risk reward ratio. Any questions regarding the setup of the trade? Okay, I don't know. Oh, now is somebody typing. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the typers to answer the questions right now. And of course, you can use this formation on every asset class. So for currencies, commodities, stocks, indices, bonds, and so on. So it doesn't matter because it's just price action and price action you can use every time. Okay, now are two people writing something. Does it matter what volume? This is a great question. Um, and of course, I would show you only the patterns today, but you need to be, yeah, it's, it's very necessary, it's very important and necessary to have an additional signal, a kind of confirmation to make the trade. And of course, you can take the volume and the volume is a, is a pretty cool one. You should use the volume if you want so. For example, if the neckline breaks and this candle here has a very high volume then it is more likely than the down move will continue so this was a great post a, a great comment from you of course you can use the volume so it it it's important to to have a look at the volume but most traders don't do so okay then let me go to the next one. The next one, uh, there's another one. What VWAP helping in managing stop? Sorry, could you describe it in more detail, please? Um, okay, the next one is the evening star. The evening star consists of three candles. So it's a three candle stick pattern. Uh, and we are talking here about these guys. These are Japanese candlesticks. And I recommend everybody to use candlesticks instead of a line uh, because you have so much more information in a candlestick or in a bar than in just one point. And a line is just connecting all the, the dots and then you have a line, but you don't know what was the high price of the period, the low price, the opening and the close price. 
So candlesticks in general are very, very powerful. And I just want to say or recommend to you, use candlesticks instead of line charts. Volumated average price, yes, you can, you can use this. And the volumated average price is, is also a very um, powerful tool. OK, yeah, then the evening star. Um, if the evening star, you see this formation here. This is the evening star uh, pattern. And yeah, in the perfect world, it appears after a very long and strong and stable uptrend or upward move. And then this pattern here appears. So I'm not sure. Can you see this pattern here good enough, or should I make it a little bit bigger? So just let me know if the, the image is too small, then I can make it bigger. And of course, everything gets bigger, but that's not a problem. Oops. So now here you can see this is the evening star pattern. Yeah, we have, and this is the description of the um, evening star formation, the first candle is a very big one. Now, of course, it's not the biggest all time. You have here a bigger one, but compared to the average candles, this is a big candle and a big bullish candle. And this first one is followed by the second one, no surprise. And the second one has a very, very small body. And in the perfect world, it is a doji. A doji is a candle where the opening and the closing price is at the same level. Um, but you will have this not very often, so you can work with very small candles. For example, here, this is also a doji, and but the candle before was not big enough to be an evening star formation. But here, in this case, we have a big bullish candle followed by a doji or a candle with a very small body and a long wick to the upside which achieves new highs, very important. The long dig to the upside has to achieve higher highs. And then the next one, the third candle, is a bearish candle with a big body, with a big candle body. And then you have the evening star formation. But this is only figuring out what is the evening star formation, but we need to know how to trade this. And yeah, I can show you this on the next slide. So yeah, how to trade uh, the evening star formation. Yeah, after this formation has appeared here, then you can enter the market in the next period, only in the next period, when the price moves down below the lowest price of the candle before. So we have here the bearish candle. And this bearish candle has a opening, close, high, and a low price. And the low price is the entry point for our short trade, only for the next period. So if the market in the next period goes up and not down, then depending on the is not triggered and we have to cancel the pending order. So we won't wait for two, three or four periods that the pending order is triggered. So only in the next period, our pending order needs to be triggered and then we are short. Otherwise, we will cancel the order. Okay, so this is our entry level. Now the next question is, what is the, uh, what is the stop loss level? And the stop loss level in this is pretty, pretty simple. You just use the absolute high of the evening star formation to set your stop loss. Yeah? And this is here, above the doji star. OK, now the next question is, where to place the take profit? And the take profit is usually the next support level. Yeah? You can here see. Yeah, the up move, 
down, up, move down, it's pretty standard for an uptrend. So you have higher highs and higher lows. And this low levels you can use as a tick profit. And you can see this here pretty clear. The market goes down after, the mar uh, after we enter the market and pretty close to our tick profit level. Um, but it's, it's, it's not bad. So we have patient and we are disciplined and our trade is running. And then it goes up a little bit. Of course, it's painful, but you have to go through. And then the market goes down. And finally here, we achieved our tech profit. So this is trading the evening star formation. And you don't need to take the support level as your tech profit. You can uh, let the winners run. But then, of course, you have to be carefully managing your stop loss. And of course, you can stop loss moving down to this level after the market goes down and up and down again, you can move your stop loss down to this level and the market goes down, up again and down. Then you can move your stop loss at this level and you can see this all the time. Yeah, you can move the stop loss down to this level and just waiting for the next little swing high to move the stop loss down. But you need a kind of a level that makes sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense to trailing the stop loss just to saying, oh, now I'm in profit. Let's move the stop loss as, as, uh, um, as quick as possible to my break even point. Yeah, most beginners do that big mistakes to moving the stop loss too quick, too fast to the break even point, just to avoid losing money. But it doesn't make any sense because you give away the chance to make more money because the market needs to breathe and you have to give him this, this space to breathe. Okay, any questions regarding this formation or regarding the stop loss entry and take profit on stop loss level? Okay, this is not the case, then I will continue. Um, yeah, the next one is the double bottom. So it's, it's the same like the double top, only to the downside. Two bottoms on a very similar level. Yeah, you can see this here. So the market went down and then we have a swing low market moves up again and then down again but now and this is like the Dow theory you said a uh, downtrend is defined by lower lows and lower highs and yeah if this not happened here because the low is on the same level and therefore we build up a bottom a double bottom in this case and yeah, you can use this, of course, on any time frame, hourly, weekly, monthly, and so on. And of course, the higher the time frame, the better the information value or the informative value. And yeah, you can apply this on every asset class. So commodities, currencies, stocks, indices, and so on. Okay, now it's, it's not the magic. Um, it's vice versa, the double top we already have. Um, yeah, you should take at least 20 periods to identify a double bottom. Yeah, this year, way more than 20 periods. And the swing high in this case must be was very, very clear. And this is here the case. Okay, but now the question is um, how to trade this. And this is the same as we had for the double top formation. So you have here the down move, swing low, market moves up again, build the neckline, and then moves down again to the same level. And then we have the double top, uh, the double bottom formation confirmed. 
and the market moves up again and our entry level is at the neckline. And here it is the same. So you can just make a pending order for a stop buy in this case, or you waiting for the closing price. So the closing price above the neckline is a kind of confirmation. And maybe it is better to have a confirmation for the trade, and but you have to decide for yourself if you want to have the closing price or just a buy stop order to enter the market. Uh, both has uh, pros and cons, of course. Yeah, and then if you have entered the market, then you need to place a stop loss level. And the stop loss level, you can make it slightly below the neckline or you take a swing low for this. And in this, in this particular case here, it's just an example, of course. Um, I took this one as a stop loss level and entered the market. And the take profit is, of course, the mirror distance between the neckline and the double bottom to the upside. This is the take profit level. And yeah, if a new swing low has appeared, then the stop loss is moving up. And here we have a new swing low is build it and the, move, uh, the stop loss is up again and yeah we are just waiting to achieve uh, either the take profit level or the stop loss yeah both can be very helpful and in this case here it takes a while and then the take profit was achieved in the euro dollar and this is on an hourly chart you can see here and you don't need to take daily charts or weekly charts um, you can make this on a minute chart or an hourly chart. So it's up to you which time frame you want to use. Okay, any questions regarding this pattern here? That's not the case, okay. Again, don't be shy. <laughs> okay, then the next one is the morning star formation. The morning star is a bullish reversal pattern you can use, and it consists of three candles merging after a long downward move. And for example, here, this is the NQ, so the NASDAQ on the daily chart, and we had a big down move in the NASDAQ and then it comes to this formation. It is not a perfect example, I would say, because the long wick on the downside of the bearish candle is not the best one, but it is enough to explain this formation in detail. Now you have this big down move, then a big bearish candle appears, followed by a doji with a small body, and lower lows, yeah, we achieved new lows here. And then the third candle appears, which is a bearish candle, and then the formation is confirmed. And maybe I can tell you a little story behind this formation. So maybe you can imagine that the market moves sideways and then the market went down and we have a lot of sellers and the sellers are stronger than the buyers. And at this point here, um, yeah, we have a very strong majority on the seller side. And then this period comes. And this is the very important and interesting period. In this period, between the buyers and the sellers, we have a pad situation. So a draw and it yeah, now it is important in which direction the next period will go. And this is the signal, the indicator for the following movement in the market very often. Yeah, we have a downtrend, everybody wants to sell. And then this thing here is a draw between the buyers and the sellers. And the next candle shows you where the market, go to, uh, market direction will go. And uh, yeah, this is the morning star formation and how to enter and to manage a trade in this case. So let's have a look at this. 
So after completing the formation here, we will place a pending order with the entry price at the high of the bullish confirming candle of the, con uh, of the formation, the pattern. And only in this period, only in the very next one, this pending order is, is valid. But after that, we have to cancel the, the pending order. We only want to enter the market in the very next period after the morning star formation has appeared. And this is very, very important. We don't want to give the market a lot of time to fulfill our entry level. Yeah, only in the next period. Very, very important. Um, yeah, the next question is where to place the stop loss and the stop loss here in this case is below the morning star formation on the very low. And the next question is where to place the take profit. And in this particular case here, there's a NASDAQ daily chart. Um, I can't remember, it, it must be December 2014 or something like that. Um, I couldn't find any take profit level. So I decided to move to stop loss only when a new swing low has appeared. And you can see here very clear, it goes up, 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 up again without building any new swing low. And you need to be patient in these times. And it goes up, then finally a little bit down and up again. So we have here built a new swing low and I could move my stop loss up to this level. Yeah. After the market goes up and down a little bit, so it was pretty close here to trigger my stop loss order, but it went up a little bit again, and then finally it takes me out of the market and this was the exit. So if you can see here, the entry was about uh, yeah, 38.40 and the exit was about 40.80. Yeah, it's 40, no, it's more than 40, 135 points or in this case here for trading the NASDAQ with the morning star formation with our own rules. Okay, yeah, these are the four reversal patterns. So two bullish reversal patterns and two bearish reversal patterns. And do you have any questions regarding this formations or this pattern? And was it helpful for you? Pretty helpful. Okay, I I like to hear that. Um, okay, I was a bit confused because you, all, all of you were so silent, and I was a little bit scared that you don't like it. But maybe it's my English or something like that. So yeah, it is good that you liked it. And I I read a message right now that Timor is in Munich and he cannot join the webinar. So. His part of the webinar is to, yeah, to announce our premium service. And in this case, I will make it very, very short. And I just want to show you something about our premium service. Of course, you can, um, you can leave if you want so, but um, I want to make it very quick. So our premium service is if you go um, um, on tradingmo.com, Yeah, learn to trade and invest with Trademo. There you have here the premium service. And if you go on premium, then you can select our premium service. And the premium service includes a nano diploma of your choice. And a nano diploma includes all necessary courses to cover an entire topic. So for example, if you want to become a successful Forex trader, then you will have all the important courses about the nano diploma in Forex. 
And what I mean by that is, let me show you here in detail. So for example, here, Forex Trader and the Forex Trader Nano Diploma includes 52 hours of content, including projects. So 31 courses, including 13 projects. And yeah, you can see and download the syllabus here. So this is just the Forex one. We have an investor one and an options trader one is following and a day trader and the um, um, derivatives trader nano diploma. So we have a lot of uh, nano diplomas. And yeah, so for example, here the Forex nano diploma, the first term of five includes seven courses. So Forex trading introduction, beginner strategy, fundamental analysis, uh, MT4 tutorial, technical analysis, protect your capital with good money management, support and resistance trading, and so on. Yeah, this was just the first term out of four, uh, out of five. Um, and additionally, you get access to our Slack community. And in our Slack community, so for example here, it's the English discussion board, uh, unfortunately, the English discussion board is very inactive, but you can change this. So uh, be strong and do it. Um, and then here you can see the premium EM signal. So we have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, a 100K real money account. And in this account, we make, of course, live trades. And you will get this information um, immediate after we do the trade. So for example, here on the 9th of January, we made three new trades. Um, it's all about stocks here in this case, but we do a lot of calendar here. So for example, it was a calendar spread with futures and we made a, a light, a tiny profit of 400 bucks. Um, but you can see we also make trades in, uh, in gold, for example, or in volatility tools or um, in commodities, of course, and so on. So almost every asset class you can imagine, we make trades. And we will show you which trades we make if you are part of the premium service. And additionally, you will get feedback if you make this uh, nano diploma of your choice and you have to project. And in this project, you have to make tasks and we will give you feedback about this. So this is a kind of mentorship. And of course, you can also contact us and write to us um, in the premium and discussion channel or in the private channel. So it's up to you how shy you are or not. And you get the access to all paid webinars we have in our community. And you will have a prioritized email support via a special email address. Yeah, so this is it. And maybe the questions I have not answered now is how much is it about the premium service? And the premium service is $49 a month and you can cancel the service at any time. So you don't have to be distracted or to us for 12 months or two years like a, a cell phone contract. You can cancel the service at any time. Yeah, so this is it. Just a little bit advertisement and promotion at the end. So sorry for that, but I had to do it. You can understand it, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, and now maybe you have some open questions, so please shoot out. Ah, there is a question I overlooked. Um, do you use the screener searching for this patterns or is it a manual process? Uh, this is a good question. In the past, I traded these formations a lot. So let's say 10 years ago. And at these times, I hadn't any screener for that. So the thing was, I have to search and do my own research every day. So I had maybe, let's say, 20 or 25 markets. And there I checked the, the, the charts for these patterns every day. And of course, it takes a lot of time. But now, these days, you have the chance to use screener for this. And one of the best screeners I know is Trader Fox. 
um, in Trader Fox, you can say, show me all evening stars in the last five days on an hourly chart or something like that. And then Forex Trader will show you all the patterns. And of course, you can filter this by markets, so on currencies, on the US markets, on the stocks, and so on and so on. So it's a plenty of opportunities uh, Trader Fox offers you. Um, I know the first part of your presentation is the webinar accessible online after the session. Yes, it is. Um, this webinar is recorded and we will give you all the recordings uh, latest on Friday with the newsletter, but maybe tomorrow. So you don't miss a minute. You will have all the webinar as a recording. Okay, to your experience, do you use only price action and candlestick patterns? Are indicators a good tool? Um, about indicators, we had a very uh, interesting uh, webinar last Tuesday where we have the five best indicators for trading. Um, um, yeah, so maybe you can have a look at this. So maybe you are a new client or not. I I don't know. So. Please let me know if you need the recording of the other webinar, then I will send you. So just send me or ask an email to, oh, this is a good point. So the last slide, I missed it already almost. Um, contact us, support at trading.com. And then of course I can um, send you the recording of the webinar with the indicators. But back to the questions, the question was, um, do you use only price action candlestick pattern? In the past, indeed, I did. Uh, but now I'm trading a lot of spreads, options, and futures markets, so derivatives, in other words. And in these markets, indicators and patterns, um, yeah, it's, it's a kind of difficult to use them. Of course, you can need or you can take this kind of pattern as a, uh, as a confirmation. So not as much as, as in the past. So I would say five years ago, 10 years ago, I used patterns and indicators a lot, but now not anymore. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm just waiting for some writers and typers. I have a question about indicators, but perhaps I can get the link to the last week's webinar and watch that first. Yeah, I would prefer this, um, but let just give me a minute. Um, mm -hmm. So why not? Let's looking for it together. YouTube, but it's YouTube deep, so no worries. Then. Trade a more. Ah, no. The, I cannot find it in this way. So I have to look for it later on because it's not published for public. It's only published, listed, uh, unlisted. And therefore, I cannot find it right here. But yeah, just let us know. Write us an email to support at trade.com. And of course, we want to give you the recordings of the indicator webinar. Uh, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> mm 
is price action trading without any use of indicators profitable from your own per experience? I would say yes. Um, and of course, there are some people that say it's not possible because you need all the indicators. But this is, to be honest, not true because all the indicators you can use are calculated by the price action. And you can see the price action in the chart. So every indicator is just a result of the price. It's just a result of the chart you can see. But of course, an indicator makes it more convenient and gives you a very, um, yeah, um, without any emotion, a signal. Yeah, you, you don't need to interpret the chart. So you have just a signal that say to you, now you can buy, now you can sell, and so on. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty convenient. But in my eyes, my opinion, it is, it is possible to, to be profitable in trading just a chart, just the action. For example, let's go back to the chart here. So we have here the NASDAQ. Yeah? Let me zoom out a little bit. And then, so for some reason here, yeah, this was also a double bottom, for example. And if you see this, yeah, the market goes down, and this was the, the crash of 2008. So the market went down, very strong, went down, find a low, and comes back, find the low again, and then here we have the neckline. If the neckline is broken, then you can go long, as we learned today. Um, yeah, and then it's all about managing the risk, managing the stop loss. And you can do this without any indicator, just using the important level in the chart. And the importance level in the charts are support and resistance. It's all about support and resistance. Um, on these levels, all participants in the markets need to know if they want to buy or sell. And these levels become very, very important all the time. So you only need and to, you need to understand what support and resistance is about. And yeah, for example, you go along here and the stop loss level is below the neckline. Yeah, let's say here at this level. So we can make here a little example. So here at this, yeah. Then the market moves up, moves uh, down a little bit, build a new swing low, and we decide to move the stop loss to this level. Then the market goes up, down, and now you can decide at this point, uh, we can make it a little bit more bigger then everything is, is pretty clear. So now at this point here, you can decide if this little up move by only one, two or three candles is enough to say this is a swing low or not. So if you decide to say this is a swing low, then you move the stop loss up to this level. And we will see here at this point, we were taken out of the market, yeah? It was a nice profit from 1280 up to 410, which is nice. Um, if you decide to say, this is not enough to say this is a swing low and you will wait a little bit longer. And now you say at this point, this is a swing low and you move the stop loss to this level and the market runs and runs and runs and runs. We are waiting for a new swing low, nothing happens. So at this point here, you can say, this is a new swing low or not, it's up to you. But I would say yes, because the market moves up for more than four periods. And this is enough in my eyes. And now we will see again a new swing low. You can again move up the stop loss and we are waiting for a new swing low. This is here the case you move up the stop loss again, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, um, then the next question, how do you decide which time interval you use? One minute, five minute, um, this depends a little bit on your own trading style. So I have never traded the one minute chart. So 
uh, in these days, I'm only trading on the daily chart. But the daily and the minute or the hourly chart, um, what you want to trade depends on your capital you have available. So for example, if you trade bigger time frames, then you need more money because your stop loss is far more away. And if you have not so much money, then it is a good decision to trade only smaller time frames because then you can um, place your stop loss order closer to your entry level. And yeah, therefore the the, um, uh, the bankroll in, in poker we say bankroll or the capital stock. Um, yeah, is important to say which time frame is good for you. And maybe you are um, you have a profession and you're trading only um, in your evening hours or something like that, then it is better to to take and trade the, the bigger time frames to managing the positions uh, in a more convenient way. Okay, yeah, no problem, no problem. And yeah, but let's see, I am so curious about this trade where we end up. Um, we waiting for a new swing low. Oh, that was damn close, but our stop loss was not triggered. So you can see here, it is a little bit space. And we don't build up a new swing low. Oh, and the market went down. We give up a, a little of our profits. And now here we can move our stop loss up a little bit again. Just waiting for more questions. Do you ever use EMAS uh, to determine support and resistance? No, I'm not the big fan or biggest fan of using moving averages. Um, I only would use moving averages as an additional filter. Uh, not only to say, okay, the MA determines my entry or my exit point. But if you see the recording of the last week's webinar, there you can see a lot about my opinion about support and resistance. And for more important about the moving averages. And I would prefer to using the SMA, the simple moving average, instead of the exponential moving average. But of course, this depends um, on the trade on, on the trader style. So a lot of traders using the EMA, I know that, but I would prefer to SMA. Uh, but there is no correct and incorrect. Yeah, it, it depends on your style. Okay, any more questions? In the meanwhile, I will look here after a new swing low. Nothing happened. Oh, that was pretty close. Here yeah, we move up our stop loss. So this is pretty close. And now here yeah, we are out of the trade. So let's see. The entry was at 12.80 and our exit is at 17.30. So almost 490 points. Okay, no more questions. Then I would say this, this is it. Um, I wish you all a nice evening. And yeah, hopefully I will see you next week on the next topic. I'm not sure about the topic of the next week, but could be something about money management or so. Yeah, we will let you know in our newsletters. And yeah, I wish you a nice evening. That was Matthias from Tradimo. Bye.